trust brings supernatural confidence. And so I get to share this with you this morning. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. So we take comfort and are encouraged, and we confidently say, the Lord is my helper in the time of need. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? It says that the Lord is my helper. He says, I'm going to confidently speak some words today. I think we should confidently speak some words together today. I want you to say this with me. Say, God is my helper, and he's helping me right now. Let's say it again. Say, God is my helper, and he's helping me right now. The scripture tells us confidently, we begin to confidently speak about our relationship with God. Trust brings a supernatural confidence around our life when we learn to trust God. And so today I'm going to share with you three parts of that. The first one is that trusting and understanding, we must trust and understand our true confidence comes from being in God. Our confidence comes from in our relationship with God. Do you know everyone struggles with insecurity in a certain area of their life? Insecurity is a real thing. Give me a wave if you've ever experienced some insecurity in your life. So insecurity is a real thing that we face, that, that we battle. You know, we can be insecure about how we talk, insecure, insecure about how we act, insecure about our education level, insecure about our height, insecure about our laugh, insecure about our finances, and the list can just keep going on and on and on. And, you know, because there's something in us that, that, that we want to be accepted. We want to, we want to be accepted by people. And then this fear, this insecurity tries to crowd around us. Because the enemy lies to us and says, you're the only one. You're the only one who feels that fear. You're the only one facing that insecurity. We have to recognize that we all face insecurities in our life. And we need to have a supernatural confidence. The only way to overcome insecurity is to find our confidence in our relationship with God, the one who made us, the one who knows us, the one who formed us. We have to have our confidence in our relationship with him. Your confidence cannot be in what you do. Your confidence cannot be on how well you perform. Your confidence cannot be on, on what you own or, or what, where you live. Our confidence cannot be in the external things. Because if our confidence is in external things, guess what? When something gets shaken, we're back insecure again. Our confidence must be in our walk with God. Who I am in him. How he has created me to be. And you know what? I'm just like you. I have times that I have to evaluate myself. Where is my confidence coming from? Where is my confidence boost coming from in my life? You get a, you got a piece of paper on the wall. You know, you finished your degree. Oh, I'm confident now. Somebody gives you a compliment says, oh, you're looking good today. I'm confident now. What, where is your confident boost coming from? You know, I, I'm as a pastor. I could have, you know, somebody comes up to me after the service and says, oh, that was a good message, pastor. I'd be like, oh, I'm feeling good. But what about if the next Sunday somebody says, I didn't like your message. Too many ums, too many odds. I don't like the way you wave your hands. I don't know what it is, right? Is my confidence coming from someone's perspective of me? Or is my confidence coming from the one who made me? The one who knows me? The one I walk with? We have to recognize in the end of it, we have an audience of one. There is one place our confidence needs to come from. Our relationship with him. Everything that can be shaken will be shaken. And so we must have our confidence come from him. Psalm 56 verse 3 says, I will have my confidence and put my trust and my reliance in you. I will gain my confidence. I will gain my trust by putting my reliance in you, God, by putting my trust in you. It has to be our trust in God. That's what will truly make us confident. When David faced Goliath, and we studied this over the last few weeks, when David faced Goliath, he was younger than Goliath. He was inexperienced. You know, he didn't have the popularity of the crowd. When Goliath stood up in battle, he had a whole crowd behind him saying, that's our man. That's our man, Goliath. He's going to tear that army apart. But when David stood up, he, his armor behind him didn't even believe in him. They were like, that's who we're sending? That little guy, that, that inexperienced guy, he was inexperienced, he was young, he didn't have the popularity of the crowd behind him. But when David faced Goliath, he didn't go based on his height, based on his age, or based on his experience. It says, when David stood in front of Goliath, he looked at Goliath and said, I come to you 
in the name of God. I come to you with my confidence in the one who made me, the one who called me, the one who knows me. I come to you, my confidence is, is that God himself is behind me. Turn to the person beside you and say, I think God's backing me. I think God's backing me. His confidence, was, his confidence was in his trust with God. And so that's where our confidence must come from. We must recognize our confidence comes from my relationship with him. The second one today is that we must trust as, as we obey the word of God. It builds our confidence. Every time we step out and we obey what God tells us to do, we obey the word of God, we get stronger, we get wiser, we get more confident. We begin to see that the word works for us. It's not just working for somebody else, but the word of God is actually working for us as well. You know, the word of God is powerful. Romans chapter 10 verse um, 17 says that faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Touch the person beside you say, I'm hearing today. I'm hearing, right? Faith is being built today. Confidence is being built today. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God, but it doesn't just stop there. Faith comes from hearing the word of God and applying it. We put some motion to the word of God. We hear it, we read it, we absorb it, and now we live it. It's one thing to hear someone else's testimony and give me a wave if you enjoy hearing someone's story. It's good. It's another thing to live it, where you own it, where it's, it's your daddy that got healed in the sound room. It's your child that heard from God. It's you who got delivered from drugs and alcohol. That you experienced the passion of the Holy Spirit touching your life. It's different when you've experienced it yourself. And God never intended for you to be living in somebody else's story. He intended for you to live in the reality of seeing the word of God work in your personal life. And so every time we obey the word of God, we get more confident. He wants to challenge us to, to move forward into a supernatural confidence by trusting his word. Turn to the person beside you say, that's where I'm headed. That's where I'm headed. We might not have arrived here, but that's where we're headed. Mark 11, 23 to 25 says, truly I tell you, whoever says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will take place, it will be done for him. For this reason I'm telling you, Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident, it will be granted to you and you will get it. Now, how many have read that portion of scripture before or heard it preached? So there we have this portion like, you know, believe, be confident, ask God, you're going to get it. But you know, there is a second portion of the scripture because it keeps going. It's not just God's going to do it all. There's always a part for us to play where we're challenged, where the Holy Spirit challenges in the word of God to step out in obedience to him. So it says, believe, trust, be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. And it says, whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against someone, forgive him and let it drop, leave it, let it go. So we see this scripture. Don't get uncomfortable on me now. Believe, be confident, pray, God's going to answer. Speak to the mountain, speak to that situation. It's going to change. But there's an action step. If you, turn to the person beside you and say, if you. If you, if you have anything against someone else, forgive them, drop it, let it go. It means we're working with God. God says, you want to speak to the mountain, see it move? You want to see things change around? You want to enter into the supernatural? If you have anything against somebody, turn to the person beside you and say, I, I might know somebody I have something against. Okay. If you, if you have anything against someone, it says, forgive them. Let it drop. Leave it alone. It's not a mic drop. It's a, it's a let it drop. Whatever the situation is, however they wronged you, whatever they said, whatever they didn't say, whatever they didn't do, whatever they did do, let it drop. Let it be over. It's a partnership with God. We are confident when we actually work the word of God into our life. We want to say to the mountain, move. But God says, if you got something against somebody, let it drop. I think we could do it together today. Why don't we make church practical today? You know, if there's something, there's somebody that you're like, mm, I kind of don't like that person. You know, as Christians, we, I, I love them, but I don't like them. <laughs> right? But you got something. Let's do it right now. Close your eyes for a minute. Say, God, right now, 
I let it drop. I forgive them in Jesus' name. See, we complicate things that were never meant to be complicated. We obey the word of God. We have to understand, I want to challenge you this week when you read the word of God. This is your challenge this week. When you read the Bible this week, look for something that you can put into practice in your life. Don't just read the words. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you how you can practice it, how you can put it into practice in your life. And the last one this morning, what builds supernatural confidence is trusting daily builds my confidence. It's, it's a daily walk with Jesus. It's daily learning how to trust God. It's not just when I'm in crisis, I ask God to come through for me. When I'm in crisis, I talk to God. When, when all chaos is like a whirlwind around me, now me and God have a relationship. No, daily. Daily trusting God. And that's why we need the word of God in our life because doubt begins to creep into our life sometimes and say, is God really with me? Is Are things really going to work out? We need the word of God to bring that solid foundation of truth into our life. And so today I get to talk to you. How, what, do you what should you remind yourself of daily? Touch the person beside you and say, this is going to be a daily thing. Daily, daily. You should take a picture of this. Well, they're going to put it on the screen at the very, very end. You should take a picture of it, put it somewhere you can see it on a re regular basis. Daily remind yourself, I am confident because he is with me. He is with me. Turn to the person beside you and say, I always knew he was with you. I always knew he was with you. I always knew he was with you. I'm confident because he is with me. Hebrews 13, 5 to 6, he said, I will never under any circumstances desert you or give you up or leave you without support, nor will I in any degree leave you helpless, nor will I forsake you or let you down or relax my hold on you. God's got his hand on you. He's not going to relax his hold on you. He says, never under any circumstance am I going to leave you. Am I going to desert you? Am I going to leave you hopeless? He is with you. Remind yourself every day. Trust comes daily. Remind yourself, God is with me. The second one is, I am confident because when I pray, he hears me. When I pray, he hears me. Have you ever had a conversation with somebody and you're not sure if they heard you? Yeah, you were talking. Ever had a phone call with someone and the other person fell asleep on the phone? That was your notice that you talked too long, by the way. But, you know, I mean, he's like, okay, like, did they hear me? When you talk to God, he hears you. 1 John 5, 14 to 15. And we are confident that he hears us when we ask him for anything that pleases him. We have a confidence. When I pray, God hears me. When you pray, God hears you. The third one is I'm confident because I know that he is going to complete the good work he began in me. He's the one who started this purpose in your life. He's the one who breathed his breath into you. He's the one who gave you your personality. He's the one who packaged you together with those certain gifts and those certain abilities. He made you. He started. God is not just a starter. He's a completer. A lot of people start a project and don't complete it. Don't put up your hand and like no one will know, okay? But, you know, we start things, we don't finish them. God is not like that. The scripture tells us in Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, I am convinced and confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it. Touch the person beside you and look him in the eyes and say, he's going to complete it. It's not over. He's going to complete it. Remind yourself daily. Your trust comes from God. Your trust works with God on a daily basis. Remind yourself he started a good work. He's going to complete it. And the last one, and I want you to take a picture when they put this up. Remind yourself daily. I am confident because my sins are forgiven. These are the four things I want you to remind yourself of daily. We're building the supernatural confidence in our walk with God and our trust relationship with God. I am confident because my sins are forgiven. I am confident because I serve a forgiving God. I am confident because surely his grace is sufficient for me. I'm confident because God already knows that you're not perfect and I'm not perfect. God already knows that you're going to make a mistake and I'm going to make a mistake. Turn to the person beside you and say, you are definitely going to make a mistake. You are definitely going to make a mistake. Come on, let's be honest today. I am confident because I serve a forgiving God.